Hello and welcome to another lesson on soundproofing and room acoustics. My name is Wilson Harwood and I am a studio designer and acoustician based out of Nashville, Tennessee. Today I'm going to be showing you a sleek and elegant design for a smaller studio designed inside of an unfinished basement. So if you are in the process of designing a studio in an unfinished basement, then this is for you. Before we jump in, I have a free resource for you. This is my free soundproofing workshop. It is 45 minutes of in-depth teaching going over exactly how to design a soundproof room. So if you're on the beginning of this journey, I highly recommend checking that out. Or if you want a refresher, definitely check it out at soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. All right, let's dive in to understanding this elegant, beautiful soundproof studio in a basement. All right, so here you can see the SketchUp file we have here, and we've got some acoustic clouds, uh, we've got our flooring, some panels, and I'm gonna start by going through the ceiling and kind of break down the different components that went into this design so you can understand how it works. Just to give you a lay of the land here, we do have uh, some stairs, which actually I wonder where my stairs went. There they are. So our stairs right here are coming down from the first floor, and this is an underground basement. We've got some piping that we had to work around, so that meant we couldn't go past this part of the wall. And then we also have a sump pump that we had to work around, which means that we couldn't bring the studio all the way over here. There's also a mini split that we decided to put on the outside and this crazy assortment of ducts that you can see here that we'll talk about later that is the heating and cooling system and ventilation system all in one. All right, so let's start with our ceiling. So the ceiling, if we put this on, uh, we've got our TGI joists uh, that are, you know, these were built into the design. I didn't have to choose that. And just to give you an idea of the height of this space, it is on the shorter side, six feet, 11 and a quarter inches. So not much height. Uh, and that's just the way it is sometimes. So we put pink insulation as always into our ceiling so that you will not have any reverberation in there. Uh, this is a hush frame raft ceiling with two layers of sheet board on it. Uh, it's actually going to be 5 8 inch drywall and then a layer of 23 30 seconds inch. The hush frame rafts, if you're not familiar with them, are, are a great little product here that you can use to attach directly to your side of your engineered eye joist, uh, in this case a TGI joist. And then they have silicone in the middle to decouple any sonic vibrations through them. And then we use 1x3 furring channels right here uh, that you then screw the drywall and the OSB layers into the furring channel, not into the actual TGI joist. So that is the ceiling. And then what we've got here, I'm going to take off the acoustics for now, and we're going to take off the interior items as well, just to get a nice clean look here. Uh, take out some of those outlets. Ah, we'll just keep them for now. So um, the next thing that I want to talk about here is the wall these two walls so we didn't want to there's a these are concrete you know walls uh with dirt on either side around them so super super soundproof except for the fact that uh you do have to worry about the impact noise traveling through the concrete so if you had like a washing machine that was rumbling upstairs that you would hear that through the impact noise if you left this wall uncovered which a lot of you out there want to do you're like hey wilson i don't want to put anything on this concrete wall i'll just build my my soundproof walls here and call it a day i personally don't think that's the best idea uh, due to the sound of how sound works in um in physics so i think it's a good idea to still decouple it which is why I came up with a system using the Genie Clip RSTs, and you can see it here. This is a 7 8 inch furring channel, and then we attach the 5 8 inch drywall and the plywood. You might be wondering what this is. This is just the backer rod and acoustic sealant to decouple our walls from our ceiling. So I do that so that the walls and the ceiling don't touch. Um, and then our, our ceiling goes right across and comes across here. And what that does, I'll actually put our ceiling back on so you can see this, is it creates a fire stop. And then there's backer rod and acoustic sealant here. So you don't want your ceiling to touch the exterior walls for the same reason I just mentioned, that that could short circuit the whole system. So we don't let it touch, but we let it touch via the backer rod and acoustic sealant, which still maintains the airtight seal without sending any sort of sonic vibration through the system itself. 
Now I'm using, if I just, let me just do this kind of the quick and dirty way of removing this. You can see that I've got the hat channel and then I'm putting uh, these thin one inch uh, rock board. It's basically like a rock wool board in between um, that is going to help reduce any sort of vibrations that would happen inside the wall. So we always want to use insulation to damp our cavities so that we don't get basically a drum head building up in our wall cavity, which would decrease the isolation and create weird resonances in our room, which we don't want. So this is a bit out of the box design, but it's one that I'm have used now on two designs and I, I really like it if you want to save space. Now, if I could, I would always do a double wall system in front of the this wall just because it's going to be better overall. But you know, not everybody wants to build the wall. Not everyone wants to give up all that space. So we can't always have the best designs for, for that reason. Same thing there. So I kind of put that back. And then this client, uh, I think it's really great. They wanted the plywood on the outside. So we're going to do like a nice cabinet grade finished plywood. It's certainly going to cost more money to have that on the outside, but it'll look really good. And it's such a small space that we're talking, you know, maybe a couple hundred bucks, not thousands and thousands of dollars in difference in cost. So it's, it's really nice. Then we've got our ventilation system here. So I'm going to show you this. This is the fresh air coming in and we've got our baffle box right here covered in drywall. And then there's also the box itself made out of the OSB sheathing, which I'm going to show here or three quarter inch plywood. Either one works. So if we look at our baffle boxes, uh, we can take off the drywall here and you can kind of see the inside of that box. And then a little custom made plenum here. Uh, I designed these boxes so that the, the CFM coming through here from the fan is enough airflow to properly heat and cool this room and ventilate it. And then we'll have an equally balanced fan on the outside, pulling air out and sending that to the outside. And this will create a system of constant airflow cycling through this room that is going to thus give fresh air and heat and cool the room according to the entire basement down here with the mini split. And the mini split is sized, it's probably a three quarter ton unit. Um, so it's sized for this whole basement, even though it's basically heating this separate room that's not actually connected to it. So pretty wild system. Um, We've got a little outlet here to plug in the AC Infinity fan, uh, another outlet there to plug in the AC Infinity fan there. And that is the general design. We've got our, our track lighting here, which is going to light up the room. And then we've got outlets in the ceiling to plug in the backlighting on our acoustic panels for the, uh, for the ceiling. So you can see here, this is actually the Enscape uh, image for lighting. So that's what that purple stuff is there. It represents the track lighting or the backlighting on our, our um, acoustic clouds. Uh, I like to go with thick, fatty, uh, known as base traps. Those are almost six inches thick on the sidewalls, which you can go with thinner ones, but you're gonna get way better acoustics uh, in general, especially in a small space by having a thicker panel and also a bigger air space behind it. So I tend to like to use those then to save space. I'm doing the GIK acoustics base traps in all four corners. Uh, ideally we would cover up those corners even deeper, but you know, it's a small space. We can't lose too much space due to acoustics. And on the back, we're doing some absorption slash diffusion with these uh, cool panels again from GIK that offer the slap panels. And those are six and a quarter, super fat, uh, that will help with the axial modes that are hitting the back wall here. So then the next part we have, uh, there's some surfboards, which is pretty cool. That was an important part of the process too. Um, we have the ISO store HDLF uh, going in here and then a custom uh, installation. As you can see, we've got putty pads around here, backer rod, everything needs to be decoupled around the door so that you don't hear uh, any vibrations transfer from the outside of this wall to the inside of this wall, which your door could do if you couple it uh, incorrectly. And on these walls, I'm just going to show you this next. Sorry if I'm jerking this around a bit, but we are going to show you the what's behind these walls. So you've got your hush frame rafts on here too. Again, these are great for smaller spaces because you lose the least amount of space. If I were to use um, a different uh, system, I would have to eat up, you know, just a couple, like an inch more of space uh, versus the hush frame rafts. So it's a pretty nice little system that you can use here and fairly easy to install, although you do have to be super careful that you install it right to maintain um, the durability of the actual hush frame rafts themselves. So that, that, does, that is one thing you gotta look out for. And so both these, uh, our drywall and our plywood layers are screwed into the five, uh, three 
one by three furring channel right here. And then I'll take off the insulation just so you can see real quick. Uh, oops, try to hide this insulation. So you can sort of see the hush frame rafts, how they're attached to the inside of our two by four wall. Um, you might be wondering what these outlets are right here. The blue is the isolated outlets. So those are my star grounded outlets, which have an isolated ground receptacle and an isolated bus bar back at the um, electrical panel there. And then these are regular outlets that can be used for anything like lamps or anything like that. We also use these really cool, um, these are the sound tools for gang XLR to ethernet uh, outlets here that are allowing us to send audio from the front of the room to the back of the room easily. Uh, so that is what we're doing there. Um, pretty cool way. And then there's also just a set right there that will send it over, um, over there. And so then we also have ethernet and then just a bunch of plugs in the front of the room for again, like a lamp and then the audio plugs right there in blue. And uh, our return duct, as I showed you before, going through there. And that is pretty much the gist of this studio. You know, built on a concrete slab, the linoleum floor, we actually install our doors over top of the floor, which is a little strange. Um, but we're using a marmoleum floor, which is very, very thin, about an eighth of an inch. Uh, and that's going to save a little bit of ceiling height and uh, will help with this whole setup. So that's, that was a good option there. So now I just want to show you some of the renders. We haven't finished the full set of plans for this. We're working on that right now, but I do have some renders to show you, which uh, are pretty cool. All right, so this is one of the renders one of my super talented designers made, and this shows you the finished product of the studio, how it will look when it is all done and built. So pretty awesome. We like to do these for all of our clients so that they get a feel for the finished space and can actually imagine themselves in it. Here is another one, just a little movie showing the space as you back away from the listening position, kind of showing the different aspects of the room here. Um, and lastly, here is a, another view of the finished studio showing you what it will finally look like with the lighting dialed in. All right, I hope you enjoyed that little journey through my process and how I design um, soundproof spaces, home recording studios, podcast studios, home theaters, soundproof offices, you name it, I have done it. Um, that is my process. That's what we like to give our clients. And I hope it also helped you understand some ways if you're trying to DIY this, how you can do that. If you're on this process and you don't want to do it all yourself and you do want to hire someone like myself, I highly recommend uh, signing up for a free soundproof clarity call. This is a great way for me to understand your project, understand some of the roadblocks you might be having and seeing if we're potentially a good fit working together. So you can do that by just going to soundproofyourstudio.com and clicking on the soundproof clarity call button. And I hope to see you there soon. Again, my name is Wilson Harwood. I'm a studio designer and soundproofing expert and acoustician based in Nashville, Tennessee. And I look forward to seeing you all next week with more information on soundproofing and room acoustics.